Good afternoon. It is a Golf Pirate TV special with Harry Wilson, who is a student at Myersco College, which is in Lancashire. Now you're home for the winter break, the Christmas break, Harry, and you've yeah, got some you've got some homework to do. Just tell yeah, us a bit well, about what you're studying, what you're doing, and why we're talking. Yeah, so I do a, um, a BA golf management degree um, at Myersco College. I'm in my third year currently, and over Christmas, I'm carrying out my dissertation project, which is all about emerging tourism locations, and that's looking especially in the Far East. So places such as China, Japan, Korea, all those sort of areas, and basically looking at where tourism is going to go in the future. So tell me, you're doing a degree. You say mm -hmm. it's your third year. So how old are you? I'm 21. 21. So how's it gone so far, uh, the degree? What Good. sort of things have you picked up on? What have you learned? Well, we've done a lot of um, business stuff, marketing, just the basics of sort of golf club operations. And um, we've touched base on a little bit of agronomy, so your greenkeeping side, and a little bit on like golf club technology, stuff such as that. Um, it's all gone well so far, so sitting on a good grade. Just got to get the last year done. And of course, you're from the Isle of Man, and mm -hmm. you've obviously got an interest in golf. Tell me, when did that start? Funnily enough, it was only when I was 15, so I was quite late. Uh, I did play when I was very young, but I didn't really get into it. Um, I struggled quite a lot, and then I couldn't find anywhere for my work experience uh, in 2015, so that was year 10. And my dad, funnily enough, just said, why don't you go to the golf club with Paul, Paul O'Reilly down at Peel? Yeah. So I did so. Um, at the end of the week, he fixed me up a set of some really old irons, left-handed irons. I regripped them all. And then from there, it was driving range, eventually getting a membership. And now I've been playing ever since, really. And what a great place to start under the stewardship of uh, Paul O'Reilly, the PGA pro at Douglas Golf Club. And he's a City fan, isn't he? <laughs> I've noticed. He is, yeah. he is. He is. Oh, well, <laughs> avoid talking about football to him at the moment, I guess. But yeah. it, it's it's interesting, really, because uh, Douglas Golf Club, it, it is like the People's Golf Club, isn't it, in, in on the Isle of Man, would you say? Yeah, yeah very, very good for its social aspect. Um, I've worked there over the summer for a couple of years now in the shop and it's more of a social club like as, as, I, as I'm working on the side I know everybody it's a good chat it's a good crack down there and this year with Covid and a lot of people staying on the island not going away on holiday they've had a bit of spare cash and you speak to the likes of Paul and Mike at Douglas and they're saying that membership it's gone through the roof mm -hmm. that's know, yeah. true yeah over last summer when Covid was probably at its um, most prominent we had, I think it was something like 89 new members. And a lot of that was the age bracket of people who were starting to stop play football. So this was anywhere from 20 to 30 year old, which is good to see for the game, especially trying to grow it and get a lot of younger people playing. So it's been doing well. It, it's it's absolutely wonderful that the island in general has prospered and you've played golf on the island and you know that we've got eight courses. Mm -hmm. And they're all so different, aren't they? Because Douglas, you've got, the fact that it's a Alistair McKenzie course, who the same guy that designed Augusta, and yeah. it's got those trademark uh, design features, and and it is a great course to play. I, I love it. I mean, I play a, a right to left uh, game, so Douglas is kind to me when I go there. And I don't know. Do you get to play other courses when when you're on the island? Yeah, uh, I don't play them much. I mainly play Douglas. I have played them all. I remember back in year eleven before I went back. To, I went to uni for the first time. And me and a couple of other lads, we all played all the courses as like a mini tour, sort of as like, oh, we're going away to uni. But I've played. I've been a, a past member at Mount Murray, um, so I've played quite a lot there. But the majority has definitely been Douglas. So you've headed to it's Preston, isn't it? Really, if we yeah. say Myersco. It's Preston, and you've undertaken a course there. It's for three years, and it's to learn about golf. And you say you've got a dissertation, and it's about golf in the Far East, isn't it? Which is, mm -hmm. you'd say yeah. it's an emerging market, but it's been it's been around for yeah. some time, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. So in my capacity of being a golf tour operator, uh, I think, you know, over the years we've had, say, 3,000 uh, golfers have, have come under my wing to, to the Isle of Man and enjoyed the, the, the golf offering here and it's fair to say that I always get to speak to them 
and you get to share experiences about where they've played golf previously and it's all the usual uh, destinations so they've been to Scotland they've been to Ireland they've played the great courses those players that are based in the northwest of England will go up to uh, the likes of Hoy Lake uh, you know the Royal Liverpool area yeah. Um, up the Fylde coast to those courses which are close to you at Lytham and, and yeah. you know, Formby and so forth. So when you speak to them about golf in the Far East, it's an entirely different proposition, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's a completely different um, culture as well as uh, dynamic because you've got to travel there. It's a lot further. It's, it's more of a bigger commitment, um, big spends as well when you go into that sort of area. Well, from my experience, I've only had good feedback uh, about golfers who visited the Far East and wh- when I can focus that it really is about uh, Thailand I- essentially mm-hmm. and although you know I've not visited there myself I can think of one particular group who uh, they were from Yorkshire and that they're, they're, they're known for being a bit tight in Yorkshire so maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe it wasn't that pricey but they told me that the courses were in very good condition almost to the point that the green staff there would be, say, 30, 40 in number, and that at certain top-class courses, you're actually hearing stories where they're using scissors to cut round the edges of the bunkers. You know, it's 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 mm. really at that level. So in addition to that, you'd have a caddy for the day, but the caddy would perhaps provide, what can I say, a service where it's beyond what you'd expect uh, normally and you, you you rightly identified there that the culture is an issue um, perhaps a cause of why uh, you, you know the, the what, what can I say the service is, is, is so different is that, is that right do you come across that yeah from what I've been looking up at so far anyway I've been doing a lot of research um, the culture is very different and um, there's a lot of cheap labor so these caddies are paid very little um, to do their service, but they do go the extra mile. So it's stuff such as cleaning your clubs before you play. Um, they do all sorts. It's not just carry a bag and recommend you a club. They, it's part of the experience. And it's something I have come across is this experience economy. So trying to sell golf as an experience instead of an item, if you get me. Yeah. So by having that in the Far East, that's what's, that's what's kind of pushing their golf tourism. Well, I think that the cost of uh, food and drink is cheaper. I think the the variety that you've got food wise, the hotels, I'm sure that they've been um, subsidised and encouraged by the government because the likes of the Thai authorities will recognise how important tourism is and that anyone who has got half a brain will know that the golf tourist spends more than other tourism groups and I think that's fair to say isn't it yeah definitely they definitely spend a lot more whether that's just on the the trip in general or outside of the trip on your food and your drinks it's one of those pursuits isn't it where it's not like you're doing something super sporty that's requires a bit of exertion is that golf you can you can have quite a good night out and Mm -hmm. and still perform on the course that the following day and and that is that's an advantage really for uh, the local economy, food and drink, golf courses, hotels, you know, there's like three strands there that, that benefit really. So, I mean, regarding uh, the options for a golf holiday, if you're traveling abroad, you're looking at certainly anyone from the UK is looking at Spain and Portugal. Then mm-hmm. the next band is Bulgaria, that's uh, appearing on the market. Um, Turkey is very, very popular because of its all-inclusive uh, packages and offerings. So at Turkey, you can get, I think it's, you know, it, it's a fr- it's a free bar for a week for about fifteen hundred quid all in with your golf. But you can find staying in the hotel. Uh, I understand. So I've not been there, but I think everyone's been to Spain and Portugal and knows what the yeah. offering is there. But then to go to Thailand, you're talking about an extra. 500 600 700 for the flight is that right yeah it will be it's a lot more it's a lot more than your standard flight just to somewhere in europe and we're not really going to see the outcome of covid yet on the prices so it'll be interesting to see 
how that manifests itself in the future. Uh, certainly for myself, if I went to Thailand, I'm not sure whether I'd go there to play golf, really. I think, you know, there's a lot of architecture, there's a lot of things to do and see. To actually go there and play golf is, it's like going to play golf in China, isn't it, really? Yeah. You'd want to see probably about a dozen things before you hit a golf course. And certainly the proposition for China is we've seen stuff on the TV, we've seen tournaments played uh, outside some of these cities and there's been obvious climate, uh, what can I say, not climate issues, uh, visibility issues, pollution issues yeah, that, that have been quite evident there. Uh, Japan, that is certainly interesting. Uh, that is one place I'd love to go. And I think the, the Japanese golfers are a breed apart. You know, I've seen them when I've been um, yeah. in the UK on the big courses there. And they've even visited the Isle of Man. And, God, they're so well-dressed and decadent. Yeah. Um, you know, Definitely. It's, it's fantastic. So what what are your findings really so far for your dissertation about um, golf in the Far East and around that area? Well, what I've found so far is there's been a lot of hidden gems that I've not really thought about. So I've looked at all the top 100 courses within the Far East, and it's unbelievable to see the amount of countries that I've not heard of that have got five or six top quality courses that are slowly coming onto the market. So there was places such as Laos in uh, in Asia that was had five out of top 100 golf courses, and it's a really, really un undeveloped country it would be a classic ledc country um very poor yet they've still got those facilities um alongside that it's just been seen that tourism is growing as a whole in china so i know alongside of um the olympics it was in beijing um all tourism has just grown massively in that area and your korea and your japan it's the golf is starting to boost um i know golf was only very lately introduced to them so sort of 1980s is where their golf really kicked off um, but the amount of growth between then and now is bigger than at any other place in the world of how fast it's come on mm. so it's just trying to find out whether in the future that could be the new Spain and Portugal whether they'll eventually take over and that there'll be a shift in the trends of um, where it's popular to go and play golf really I think uh, travel time has a lot to do with it Spain and Portugal the advantage is you can be flying into the Algarve in the mm -hmm. morning and on the tee in the afternoon. I think, what are we talking about, 10 hours to go out to Thailand? Yeah. Maybe yeah, with a up. stop as well? I don't know. I've not been. Are, are you going to get out there one day? I'd love to go out there. It's the one, one of the one, only places I've not really been in Asia. Um, I've, I've been a fair few different places, um, other sides of the world, but not. I've never gone to, to Asia. So it really interests me, the culture and the golf. I'd love to go over and play. Excellent, excellent. So for your dissertation, uh, any uh, bits and pieces that we can help you out with uh, further? Um, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking for any golfers on the Isle of Man that have had an experience um, playing golf in the Far East, whether that's you know Thailand, Japan, China, Korea, it doesn't matter, anywhere in the Far East. I'd just love to hear some of your experiences, and um, whether that's me interviewing you in, in a time later on or I'll be handing out a load of questionnaires to all the golf clubs in the Isle of Man um, and posting some of them on the forums that are on Facebook I know there's like the golf golf chat Isle of Man and places like that and um, they'll be going up in a couple of weeks so if anybody that does have an experience of playing in the Far East it'd be great to be able to get your feedback. Excellent I think uh, it'd be worth contacting each club secretary via email I'd say most clubs actually have a newsletter uh, that they can send out they're on club v1 as a membership management system uh, it's quite easy with a push of a button uh, and a link uh, they could uh, assist there what would you be doing looking at having a survey or just um, a contact yeah i'm gonna have some surveys via survey monkey so they'll be going out in a couple of weeks I will also make physical copies as well because I know not everybody is up to date with using computers and that. So I will hand out physical copies into pro shops, um, but most of it will be over Survey Monkey, so that'll be in your I newsletters. Th I think in this day and age, most people now it must be less than one percent 
of well, some people don't stop, that's the yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, if uh, if we can help in any way, uh, either myself or uh, Rowney Golf Club, uh, please just drop us a line and we can uh, we can make sure that your message is sent out far and wide. And uh, very good luck with the studies. And I look yeah. forward to you having a a bright career in golf in the future. Thank you very much.